home at a stormy and critical period. A large crowd, of course, waited in Downing Street. Who would be the new occupant of number 10? Others went to the palace. Whom would the Queen send for? The choice of a premier is the royal prerogative, and first the Marquis of Salisbury was summoned to the palace to tender his advice. Next, Her Majesty called on the wisdom and experience of Sir Winston Churchill. Meanwhile, many expected that Mr. Butler, seen here at his London home, might be Sir Anthony's successor. Then the crowds at the palace saw Mr. Harold Macmillan drive in, and as indeed proved to be the case, it seemed certain that he had been chosen to take over the onerous duties of the Premiership. The announcement was quickly made, and on his return to Downing Street, Mr. Macmillan was besieged. Naturally, everyone wanted a statement, and in fact, he lost no time in making his first address as Prime Minister. This afternoon, the Queen did me the great honour to ask me to form a government. I have accepted this duty. The occasion is a sad one for me, brought about as it is by the retirement of my old and very dear friend, Anthony Eden. I'm sure there isn't any one of you who would not join with me in wishing him good health and a speedy recovery. We have a difficult task before us in this country, all of us, and it will need our courage and our strength. And we shall need the sympathy and the goodwill and understanding of everyone in the country, whatever their party or beliefs. I believe we shall have that sympathy, and I'm certain that with the efforts of all, we can succeed. Mr. Cho and La, 